there's a part of the Apple ecosystem that I've not touched on in all the years that I've been working on this channel, but I get asked about a lot in the comments, and that's iCloud. It's something that I reckon we all use every day as Apple users, yet a huge number of people find it really confusing. And to be fair, that's because Apple make it way more confusing than it needs to be. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what iCloud is and what it isn't. I'll debunk some myths and try and answer some frequently asked questions so that hopefully by the end of this video, iCloud will be a tool that you can use with confidence to get the most out of it rather than be confused by. Okay, let's get into it. Possibly the most important thing to understand when it comes to iCloud is that iCloud is not designed as a cloud storage solution. This might sound crazy to you because ultimately it's storage for data and it's in the cloud. So how can I possibly sit here and tell you that iCloud is not a cloud storage solution? The answer lies in the way in which you're going to be using iCloud and understanding how Apple intend for you to use iCloud versus a service like Dropbox, for example. Dropbox explained the service in the first line on their website. It's the choice for storing and sharing your most important files. If you have electronic files, whether that's photos or videos or documents like PDFs, Word files, or pretty much anything else, you can put them into Dropbox and know that they're safe and secure there. And you can then use the tools built into Dropbox to share those files with other people to work collaboratively on documents or let other people view photos, all that good stuff. You put something in Dropbox and so long as you continue to pay your monthly fee, if you go back to it a couple of years later, the files would still be there ready for you to download. And Dropbox also employs a certain degree of device synchronization. So if I install the Dropbox client on my MacBook Air and I put a photo into my Dropbox folder there, it will then upload that file to the cloud. And if I were then to go to my MacBook Pro and check out the same Dropbox folder, I could view the file in there as well. But in general, Dropbox is more about manually putting files into a specific part of your computer or your phone, hence the name, in order for the software to be able to sync and back up that file. iCloud, on the other hand, is all about bringing the overall Apple experience together seamlessly. In Apple's mind, your iPhone, iPad and Mac are just different tools used to access the same data, the same experience, depending on where you are and what you're doing. You can see this if you download an app like Pages on all your Apple devices. It's essentially the same word processing app, regardless of whether you use it on your iPhone or your iPad or your Mac. Nowhere is this more apparent than with photos and videos. To illustrate this, here's a photo that I took on my daily driver iPhone. This is an iPhone 14 Pro, and I got this picture when I was out walking the dog. I'm quite fortunate because of what I do for a living, I have a number of Apple devices, and the whole point of iCloud is that seconds after this picture is taken, my iPhone is going to automatically upload it to the cloud without me doing anything. It just happens in the background. This does two things. It backs the photo up, but it also means that long before I get home from my dog walk, the photo is available for me to view on the Photos app, on my iPad, on my Mac Studio, on my MacBook Air, even on my Apple TV or my watch. But this is where the service differs from something like Dropbox. Not only is the photo visible in your Photos app, but the photo library is identical on your different devices, again, without you doing anything. If you then take your iPad, for example, and snap a photo on that or import a photo from a camera, that image will then be visible on all your other devices, including your iPhone, all of your devices feed into and pull data from iCloud. Even though you might own lots of different Apple devices, you've got one iCloud, which is recreating that same experience no matter which device you pick up. Here's a really important thing you need to understand. Let's say that I'm now sitting with my Mac working on that and I open the Photos app and see the photo in there and I think, well, I don't want that photo here taking up space on my Mac. I only want it on my iPhone. So I right click and I delete the photo. Keep in mind, you're not looking at your Mac's photo library. You're looking at your iCloud photo library. You just happen to be viewing it on your Mac. So if you delete it here, you delete it everywhere, including the cloud. So the way in which you need to think about iCloud, certainly in terms of data, is that it's like having a single overarching cloud that's accessible regardless of the device that you're using. The way in which you access that cloud is gonna vary depending on your device and what you're trying to access. So from iCloud, you've got loads of services like Photos and iCloud Drive and iCloud Keychain and lots of others that we'll talk about in this video. In short, iCloud stores a lot. 
If I open my iPhone, I can tap into settings, then tap on my Apple ID, then tap on iCloud, and then under apps using iCloud, I can tap on show all. And you can see for yourself everything that's included here. As we've already mentioned, and as I think most people will make use of, iCloud will store the photos and videos that you capture on your connected Apple devices, and they're stored in your Photos app. iCloud Drive stores all of your documents, either documents that you've created using the iWork suite, like Pages, Numbers, and Keynote, or documents that you've imported into files, things like PDFs, zip files, Word, or Excel files, or really any type of digital file. There is a 50 gigabyte limit per file, and you can't use it to store things like library files. Mail, messages, contacts, and calendar syncs across all your devices, as do first-party productivity apps like Reminders, Notes, and Freeform. So when you put a reminder on your iPhone and then you notice it on your iPad, for example, that's iCloud working in the background. Any health data that you input on your phone will sync to the cloud. And as of iPadOS 17, you'll be able to view and edit that data in the dedicated health app for iPad and changes will be reflected across all devices. Passwords and login information are stored in iCloud Keychain, as well as browser information in Safari, things like your bookmarks, favorites, and even profiles when iOS 17 releases. Many of Apple's first-party apps like Stocks, News, Books, Game Center, TV, and more use iCloud to keep everything in sync for you. And if a third-party app offers iCloud Sync, that data will also be stored securely in your iCloud account. And of course, backups of your devices are stored in the cloud. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly, which you can do via the link in the description of this video or by scanning the QR code on screen now. The newsletter goes out each Friday and I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. One of the most common misconceptions I see when it comes to iCloud is people getting iCloud and iCloud Drive confused. Think of it hierarchically. iCloud is the cloud service that sits up top and then has all of these services branching off from it, of which Photos is one, iCloud Keychain is one, iCloud Drive is one, and they all exist because they leverage iCloud. iCloud Drive is like the Photos app on your iPhone, but for files. It's a place where you store digital content that's immediately accessible on all your different Apple devices. The difference is that rather than storing specifically photos and videos, which you can store here by the way just to confuse things even further, iCloud Drive is designed for files like word processing documents, spreadsheets, slide decks, PDFs, and most other similar files. You can store photos and videos here if you wish, you're just better off storing them in the dedicated photos app instead. To illustrate how this works, here's a PDF that I've got stored locally on my Mac. I'm going to open Finder and then drop the PDF into iCloud Drive. It's a deliberately small PDF, so it won't take long for this to upload, but then if I grab my iPhone, which is logged into the same iCloud account, I can then open the Files app and you can see the PDF right there and ready for me. If I right click on this file on my Mac, notice that we've got two options for removing this file. We can move it to the bin or we can remove the download. If we move it to the bin, the file will be removed from my Mac but also iCloud, so this will no longer be visible here on my Mac or anywhere the file is deleted. Alternatively, if you choose Remove Download, you're going to remove the physical file from here on your Mac, which will free up space here on my Mac, but it will stay in the cloud, accessible on all your devices. You'll know this has happened if you see a cloud icon with a little arrow pointing down. Tapping on that icon will download the file to your computer, but so would double clicking to open it up. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of those annoying things where the feature to remove downloads exists here in iCloud Drive, but not in Photos. Your computer is generally pretty good at managing all of this by itself. It learns that if you've got files that you're opening and editing on a regular basis, it will generally keep those on your machine, whilst also syncing it to the cloud, but files that you rarely ever use or haven't touched in a long time will be offloaded. In general, because of the way iCloud Drive is designed, you'll probably manage most of your iCloud Drive data from within other apps. So for example, when I create the PDFs for my videos, which you can access for $5 a month via the link in the description of this video, by the way, I open up Pages, I create a new document, and I choose the Pages folder in my iCloud Drive as the place to store the document. 
Because I create them in iCloud Drive rather than say in my downloads folder or a folder that's local to my computer only, it means that I can start the project here on my Mac Studio, but then I could grab my MacBook Air or my iPad or even my iPhone and pick up right where I left off. Plus any changes that I make would be immediately synced to the cloud and therefore all my devices. Notice in this folder, you can see the sizes of these documents and some of them are really large. All of these files are synced to the cloud because they're in my iCloud drive, but you can see that these files are only in the cloud, not stored locally. These ones up top are both in the cloud and stored locally on this machine. So if I wanted a way to save some space on this computer, I could select all of these, right click and choose remove downloads. Again, this removes the files from here on this computer, but the files still exist in the cloud. Deleting them from this folder would delete the files altogether. I'm gonna keep stressing that as it is the number one mistake I see people making with iCloud. A question I get asked all the time is why if I create a new album in photos and move photos there, do the photos still show in my all photos tab? And the reason for this is that all photos is exactly what it sounds like. It's your messy, unorganized shoebox under the bed storage for all your images. Yes, you can then go and create albums, but those albums are basically collections of content taken from your all photos box, which is why they still exist in that. If you put a photo in an album, then go and delete the photo from your all photos, it's deleted, including from the album that you just put it in. There's one exception to this rule and that's the shared photo albums. So here in the photos app, let's say that I tap the plus button in the upper left of the screen and choose new shared album. I would give the album a name, then choose next, and then I would add anyone that I'd like to invite to this album, although you can skip that if you wish and just tap create. Even though it's called a shared album, you don't actually have to share it with anyone. The album is now created and if you tap into it, then tap the plus button, you can begin selecting photos and videos from your own photo library to add to the shared album. You could then quite safely delete the images from your all photos collection because the images are still in the cloud, but in the shared albums instead. The entire point of a shared album is that you're probably gonna share it with other people and ideally they're gonna add content to it also. My wife and I create one each time we go on holiday and every day we just add all the pictures that we've taken to create one giant album that we can both look at whenever we like. I could therefore go through my photo library and delete the images in my all photos and they'll remain in the shared album. I don't bother with this personally because I trust my phone to do a good enough job at optimizing the storage, but this could be a method that you could use for having a bit more control over how you manage and organize your photos. But as ever, remember that if you delete the photos from the shared album, or if you delete the shared album entirely, those photos are gone. And also remember that if you create a shared album, it is still using up space on your iCloud storage, even if you remove the photos from your phone. So this isn't a hack for getting free iCloud storage or anything like that. Another function of iCloud is to store backups of your various different devices. So let's say for example that I'm out with my iPhone and I lose it and can't get it back. I buy a new phone, I can use iCloud to download the latest backup of that phone to my new handset. Now keep in mind that iCloud Photos and iCloud Drive are both separate from device backups and keep in mind that all of the apps, things like notes, reminders, freeform, news, messages, although they do store data in the cloud, that's also separate you might be forgiven for wondering, A, what does a backup of a phone or iPad actually contain? And B, is there any point in having one? The answer to B at least is yes, because a backup is gonna save you a lot of time and effort. If we head to Apple's support page, they tell you exactly what's kept in a device backup. It's data about your device's settings, home screen layout, and app organization. It's things like your Apple Watch backups, because your watch gets paired with your iPhone, so the backup for that is kept within your iPhone backup. It's app data for various different apps, but it's also photo and video backups if you're not using iCloud Photos, although honestly, I'd recommend that you enable iCloud Photos for simplicity. It's messages if you're not using messages in iCloud. So you can see that if you're someone who generally makes use of iCloud, Device backups are a convenience more than anything else, saving you from having to mess around in settings. To enable iCloud backups, go into settings, tap on your Apple ID at the top of the screen, and then find your device in the list down at the bottom of this page. Tap on your device and ensure that iCloud backup is enabled. 
You may wish to disable backup over mobile data. I've got an unlimited data plan, so I'm not worried about this. In general, my iPhone is gonna back up at night over Wi-Fi. Another common misconception here is that backups are created new and add to old backups, clogging up your iCloud storage. This isn't the case at all. Any new backups overwrite the old ones, so you should only ever have one backup per device in your iCloud storage. So every Apple ID comes with five gigabytes of free storage from Apple. That's every Apple ID, not every Apple device. So one of the tools that I use for my video creation is a burner account. I created a separate Apple ID with fake information and it's full of photos that I don't care if people see in my videos and notes that don't contain any personal information, fake contacts and all that kind of stuff because it makes my life easier when I'm creating these videos. I created this burner account for free with Apple and it came with five gigabytes of iCloud space that I can use to upload photos and videos, documents in iCloud Drive, backups, everything that we've already talked about. Five gigabytes is not a lot of data these days. The keen-eyed amongst you might have noticed that on my real account, my iPhone backups are about five gigabytes by themselves. So you can see how this data gets eaten up pretty quickly. And honestly, this is deliberate by Apple. They want to give you just enough data so that you can experience the benefits of it, but not enough that you can stay a free member for too long. The good news is that iCloud space is cheap. Now you could head into settings, then your Apple ID, then iCloud, then manage account storage. And you can see that on my real account, 262 gigabytes of space is dedicated to my photo library. So if this bothered me, I could go into photos and I could be ruthless and delete some content from in there to free up some space. Or I could access photos on my Mac and grab a load of pictures and videos and pull them across to an external drive or upload them to a different storage provider. This by itself isn't a bad idea, by the way, just to ensure that your precious photos and videos are being stored in more than one place. But honestly, what I would recommend most people do is pay for some more storage. You can see on my burner account, if I tap into change storage plan, I can get 50 gigabytes for a pound a month, 200 gigabytes for three pound a month, and two terabytes for nine pounds a month. If you'd prefer to get on the manual route of deleting iCloud storage, it's all here in Manage Account Storage. But do of course be aware that if you delete anything, it is gone for good. iCloud.com is basically the web interface that you use to access much of what we've talked about here today via the web. You would navigate to iCloud.com and log in with your Apple ID and password. Once logged in, you can do a surprising amount. You can access your iCloud mail, as well as view your contacts, calendar, notes, and reminders. You can view and work in the iWork suite of apps. That's pages, numbers, and keynote. You can use Find My to find your devices. You can view your photos and videos in the Photos app and your files in the Drive app. You can also view your storage usage and make changes to your plan here if you wish. You can access data recovery, where you've got 30 days to restore any files that you might have deleted from iCloud iCloud.com is really useful, but it's one of those there if you need it types of services. I tend not to use it because I'm really embedded into the Apple ecosystem and all the work I do is on an Apple device. But if I was having to jump between an Apple device and an Android phone or a Windows PC, for example, it would be really useful to me. Keep in mind, everything that you do on iCloud.com is gonna be in your browser, so totally online, in other words. If you download and change anything, you'd then have to upload it again to ensure iCloud is up to date. If you sign up for a paid version of iCloud, you also get access to iCloud Plus features. iCloud Private Relay is designed to make it more difficult for companies to build a profile about you based on things like your IP address, location, and browsing history. It's different to a VPN, but it offers some degree of the protection that a VPN would offer you. Hide My Email allows you to create unique, random email addresses that automatically forward to your inbox. This is actually really useful. I've used this a bunch of times where I maybe want to sign up for something, but I'd prefer to not use my actual email address. HomeKit Secure Video allows compatible cameras to be viewed within the Home app on all your devices and for the footage to be analyzed by your Home Hub to allow for human detection, all that kind of stuff. It would be a great feature had Apple not totally neglected it these past few years. So there you go. Hopefully that clears up much of the confusion surrounding iCloud. If you're interested in videos about specific apps within the iCloud ecosystem, like Drive and Photos, check out my channel. There's loads on there and let me know in the comments if you're still unsure about anything. 
And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.